Jenna Miller. There are many facts and myths surrounding pain management. For instance, did you know that losing weight can ease pain because there's less pressure on your joints and back? It's also true that weather and your attitude can affect your pain, but did you also know that pain is not necessarily a part of aging? Or the fact that lots of rest is not necessarily good for back pain? We'll separate these facts and myths on tonight's show as we talk about pain management featuring Dr. Bell Razafendra Bay. presentation of Doctors on Call on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from CAMGO, the state's only Kansas-based medical liability provider, serving medical professionals and advocating for the health for all Kansans. Your family is our family. Staff at Smith County Memorial Hospital wants to set the standard of excellence for health care in North Central Kansas. Dr. Bell Razafendra Bay earned his medical degree from the University de Madagascar and completed his residency and training in physical medicine and real rehabilitation at the Loma Linda University Medical Center in California <clears throat> after spending a year of internal medicine internship at the same institution. Dr. Bell is certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation by the American Board of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. He is the president of Pain Spine and Rehab PA. His memberships include the Fellow of the American Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. He is a diplomat of the American Board of Pain Medicine and the diplomat of the American Board of Physical Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, North America Spine Society. His position includes the pain, spine, and rehab, and he also has privileges at the Central Kansas Medical Center, Clara Barton Hospital, and Great Bend Regional Hospital. Dr. Zoncall brings you information which may be useful to you when you visit your own doctor. Thank you so much for joining us again this season. We uh, had more to talk about, so we're so glad that you were able to come back. It's always nice to be here. Absolutely. So we have a, an email question, first of all. It kind of goes along with what we were talking about in the intro regarding the weather. This uh, call or this person asked if it's true that the weather can change your pain levels. She says her knees hurt during weather change, and I'm curious if this is a myth or not, or if it's in her head. And that comes from Diana. So go ahead with your answer on that one. Thank you for uh, the questions. Uh, actually, uh, the fibers, the nerve fibers affected by cold, uh, uh, it can also um, uh, cause in like. Uh, is sensitivity when it's uh, pretty too cold, but uh, um, it uh, can irritate in or those are nociceptive uh, in the joints. And it's not a myth, but it's uh, trigger pain, sensitivity. The lower threshold of the pain um, as well uh, created the more pain for those people. Muscle getting stiffer, the knots and so on. So all contribute to more a perception of pain in the people with arthritis. And what can a person do if they know the weather's going to change and they might be in a little more pain? What can a person do? Well, that's uh, a common sense. It should get warmer, the joints. Um, uh, once the pain started, it's hard to stop. Um, the muscle cramps and the tightness and the spasm, usually the response of the underlying joint that is hurting. So um, once the muscles tighten, uh, knots and pain and stiff, there's a small fibers inside those muscles, those squeezed in and get more pain. And so uh, preventive, uh, preventative care would be uh, useful uh, in uh, warming up, uh, loosening up those muscles, those strengths. And uh, if necessary, you may even take uh, uh, medication, anti-inflammatories. Uh, medication works better if it's taken early on uh, before pain started, then uh, uh, doing it takes a while for it to get started so those are uh, things that we can use uh, stretching um, is a good habit to have uh, doing stretching of those joints um, on a regular basis especially in the morning those people who have uh, inflammatory arthritis or degenerative arthritis tend to have more stiffness especially in the morning especially if you get cold some of them may have a stiffness up to 30 minutes even one hour two hours 
and uh, those times are very difficult. So I would, uh, if you have a pa type of pain medication, anti-inflammatories or Tylenol, uh, taking those early um, help uh, prevent uh, the pain. Excellent information. <coughs> Let's talk a little bit about neuropathy, what it is and what a person can do. Neuropathy is um, um, pain coming from nerves and uh, it's a variety of neuropathy. Uh, the most common neuropathy that we uh, encountered is the diabetic neuropathy. That's the most common. And uh, we call the rest is idiopathic, means we don't know really the known. But uh, um, the great majority of neuropathy comes from what we call metabolic neuropathy. Metabolic neuropathy is something from metabolism, from something that we um, we eat uh, something that related to body compositions. And um, those neuropathy uh, a can, uh, can appear in different variety of form. For instance, the diabetic neuropathy um, depends on how long you had the diabetic. It's kind of correlated. Uh, most pe people, about uh, a little bit between 10 to 20 percent of people who first diagnosed with diabetic has some type of neuropathy already. So uh, someone that is diabetic that has been there with uh, a heart disease uh, affected, uh, diabetic is affecting multiple organs and uh, full-blown diabetic, 60% um, can have neuropathy. So um, that is just diabetic itself. But um, beside that, there are people who are non-diabetic but still have neuropathy. The form of neuropathy is uh, in variety. The most common is the uh, symmetric uh, neuropathy. The symmetric means it happened to both hands, it happened to both feet, and it can also length dependent, length dependent. So the farthest the limbs was affected the most. So the toes, the feet, the ankles, and uh, it's, it's length dependent. It's uh, the the more advanced, the more progressed uh, the, uh, the disease is, the neuropathy, it's, uh, it pushes you up and toward the ankles and feet and even up to the knee. So uh, those are affected not only numbness, but uh, in, in addition to the numbness, there's pain. You know, I feel numb, but it hurts. We call it painful numbness. It tingles, burn, and pins and needles. Um, and that uh, there's a glove like pattern in the hands. So the length of the feet, uh, once it's like that, it will affect the hands, the gloves pattern up to the hands. So uh, it's like a, a drain uh, from the distal part, from the farthest part toward the, toward the body. And this is a bit the same, th the same aspect. It's numb and tingles. The, the interesting part is, uh, in addition to that symmetric neuropathy, it can have focal neuropathy. It is focalized. So it uh, affects a s very specific nerve. Let's say patient with uh, diabetic neuropathy have, have numbness and tingling and burning of the hands, at the same time have carpal tunnel. You know, so the combination of those pain uh, really become difficult to control. You do a nerve testing to find out what's the problem, you find neuropathy from diabetic affecting all nerves, the small nerves, and then the patient have carpal tunnel or no tunnel syndrome, which is affecting the big nerves. Um, and so that uh, type of neuropathy, it can also affect the big nerve from the back, the spine. You know, this big, this nerve called the uh, uh, root nerves, but um, those nerves can really affect it by um, uh, neuropathy, uh, neuropathy, uh, diabetic or autonomic uh, or idiopathic metabolic neuropathy. And uh, people have the combination of uh, sciatica and neuropathic pain. So it is uh, become difficult. The treatment, you can have epidural steroid injection, but uh, that can raise the blood sugar and so on. Uh, so there's a uh, multiple uh, treatment has been started about it, you know, the anti-convulsion uh, anti treatment, which is uh, the medication for seizure, you know. There is antidepressant, the medication for people with depressed mood. There are, those are uh, used, we can be used as off-label for neuropathy. So 
uh, it's help, you know, precabalin, dirica, uh, neurontin, it's very helpful. Sometimes it can have side effect of retention, ret retention of fluid, uh, but um, majority can get some, some relief from it. And there is some topical can use, like capsaicin, like a uh, paper, very hot. Uh, it's working well, but the people with already sensitive feet, sensitive hand, when you have that, they cannot stand it. They say, no, that doctor, I cannot take that one. When it's really uh, hard to control and so on, um, the new one uh, is that has been shown very good to, um, providing good responses, the spinal stimulator. There are some innovative, and this is type of spinal stimulator that I um, again show you here. Um, um, was shown that uh, the high frequency spinal stimulator works really good on uh, neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy. Uh, it has shown that um, excessive tolerance has improved to 85 percent from using the spinal stimulator, and people within three months, six months the uh, increase in response will be, has been shown to be much improved. You may feel like, uh, oh, I have spinal stimulator for this, but for those people with uh, neuropathy, they cannot sleep, they cannot walk, they, their life is so miserable. So with the spinal stimulator, the spinal stimulator for those who haven't um, uh, been here before is uh, a tool that um, in certain wires, um, in the back of the spinal cord at about uh, T8, T9 level, and it's kind of block the pain from entering the brain. And from that type of pulsation and combination, uh, the pain in the area, in the feet and back, is relieved. And the adjustment can be done for people depends on the severity of their uh, neuropathy. Uh, but you cannot feel that outside, it's just hidden and you have a battery that also uh, uh, placed uh, in the side of the patient. It works really well. It does not take long to insert it and uh, most of them now can be even MRI uh, approved. Uh, you can use uh, MRI. Uh, you can have a trial. The trial takes about a week. You can try it and see how it feels. And if I uh, have uh, more than 50% of, uh, wow, I feel good, I can sleep better, mood is better, family feels, you know, enjoying that. Um, uh, once uh, you don't have any more complaint, then um, that patient is a candidate for spinal stimulator. And he, um, patient that have had that, um, really, we were able to reduce the pain medication. Mm -hmm very significantly. Reducing the pain medications, patient uh, feels much better because the side effect of pain medication is there as well. So uh, the key uh, for pain management um, now is to uh, help uh, reduce the use of pain medications. Uh, when the patient come to me as a new patient, the first thing they the first thing they may ask when I get in and said, how are you, what, uh, what do you need? I said, well, my doctor cannot prescribe my pain medication, so refer to me. So uh, the preoccupation is, where is my pain medications? And I just come and said, I want to treat your pain, the origin of the pain. Um, uh, people uh, may be very hooked to that pain medication and said, I'm dying if I don't have it, and said, I'll take care of your pain. Don't worry about anything. You are sure we'll take care of the pain. If you need pain medication, we'll do pro provide that. If we need less, we'll be, but don't worry about that. We are here to treat your pain. Where is your pain? Tell me about your pain. And uh, uh, once we talk to the patient, uh, examine the patient, we're able to provide the most appropriate treatment for them. Very good information. You had mentioned carpal tunnel. What can you do to help that? Yes, the carpal tunnel is um, um, mainly um, coming from repetitive use of uh, hands. Uh, very common uh, people who are, uh, uh, let's say, dental hygienist, uh, uh, carpenter, or whoever who have used their hands so much, uh, electricians, uh, all of that, uh, can, may get it. Uh, secretary. So uh, most important is to maintain the wrist in the neutral positions, you know, the wrist neutral position. 
that is a good thing. And um, uh, avoid uh, too much uh, the same repetitive uh, motions. Um, even despite that, there are people who have a naturally tight ligament. So there's a, in the wrist, wrist, in the wrist here, there's a ligament across the wrist. And uh, those ligament is tight, and there are the nerves on goes through that, underneath that ligament, and there are about five uh, tendon squeezed in there. It doesn't take much to get tight. So when that get tight and people are, um, have a naturally um, tight uh, carpal tunnel, uh, then you have that symptom. So most of the time, those three fingers are affected. You know, the three fingers, the thumb, the index, and the longer fingers. Um, because the nerve are innervated those three fingers. So uh, people might feel like, oh, this numb. And sometimes it will feel like the whole hand, but most common, this one. Those are carpal tunnel. Uh, uh, some people really have a high tolerance, and they don't even feel the pain. The treatment is uh, correcting that habits. Number two, um, injection can be used for injecting the carpal tunnel. It relieves the th temporarily at least, and uh, using brace. You know, at night especially, these uh, people with carpal tunnel at night they could not sleep. They are rubbing their hands and uh, shaking their hands and very much uh, that's one of the most um, disturbing symptoms they have. But uh, what we do now, we, we use this called minimally invasive carpal tunnel decompression and release. Means that uh, with uh, just a very tiny opening in the wrist, you know, one eighth of uh, inches, with that opening we're just able to get a knife, a knife that has a uh, type of hook, and it's uh, on the ultrasound, we can really visualize the nerve, the tendon, everything in there, and then once you get underneath the, the ligament, then we just uh, pull it out and cut that ligament, divide that ligament, you know, within 10 minutes done, and almost no bleeding, uh, you know, the success is great, Patient can use their hands, and that is uh, one of the things that uh, one of the procedure that I think are very rewarding to patient and to the physicians. The other uh, option would be open carpal tunnel surgery, which is a, a cut um, about one inch or one inch and a half. Um, you know, you cannot use the hand with that until it heals, and you need to wait for the other one, which is a very good standard of care. But there are uh, alternatives there that you, you can explore, patient can, you know, explore, uh, we can provide. Excellent. We want to yeah. remind our viewers that we're talking about pain management tonight with Dr. Bell Razafinder Bay from Great Bend. Give us a call at 800-337-4788 if you have a question regarding pain. You hear a lot about knee replacements, hip replacements. What can you offer those patients who are having pain in their knees and hips? Uh, he, knees and hip uh, pain is very common, you know, uh, hopefully it happened to someone that is uh, older, you know. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in the past, uh, hip replacement and knee replacement are very good, that's the standard of care. If you are qualified for it, if someone is in the age of needing it, you know, there's knee replacement doesn't last forever let's say 12 years, 20 years, so you may have, so uh, for that reason, it's better to wait later on in life, but you don't want to wait too late to, because when you get too late in the 90s, then it's become difficult to do it. Um, the same for the hip replacement, so uh, consult the orthopedic surgeon and primary care, they will give you the best advice. For those who are, um, in the young and uh, want to be more conservative, there are a few options. Number one uh, is to protect the joint. Protect the joint. The stronger the muscle, the stronger the protection you got. You know, people with uh, strong muscles, fit, they able to preserve their joint well, you know. 
And uh, I think that will be the best route for those who don't have it. Make sure. Number two, avoid trauma. You know, trauma is thing. You know, some uh, um, job requiring kneeling all the time. Let's say people who are installing floor roofers, you know, they are all the time on their knees. Those are uh, kind of difficult, you know, cannot, then you may have predisposed to those knee problems. So uh, you, you can avoid that. When it's hurting, there are uh, medications, you know, pain medications and uh, intraarticular injections. The injection can vary from uh, um, steroid injections, numbing medications to uh, hyaluronic acid, which is like uh, uh, taken from the comb of the rooster, and uh, um, they can modify it and so on, and it actually just inject into the joint will help uh, lubricate the joint. And usually works well when patients still have the cartilage, you know. One patient is born, in bo born on bone, that injection is not as helpful as uh, uh, when it's still young. So uh, those are options besides surgery. Um, there are four people who are so much pain, cannot have surgery because of some reason, you know, or old, to, uh, old for that. Then uh, we mentioned about uh, radiofrequency ablation. There's a nerve that is surrounding the knees, and we try to target those nerves that carries the pain and numb it and then burn it, you know, and put to sleep those nerves. And those nerves can, when it burn and numb, give some relief for the knee until that nerve regenerate l later, you know. Uh, other option is the uh, peripheral nerve stimulator that apply to the knee after trial and set an up, then you can have a peripheral nerve stimulator. Uh, the shoulder is a little bit more uh, difficult. The shoulder is more, the motion of the shoulder is so big, you know, you can, uh, 360, it's uh, one of, uh, quite complicated um, because there are muscles that really holding it all together. Most common problem with the shoulder, especially in a younger person, is not really that arthritis, it is just the dysfunction, dysfunction of the muscle. Some muscles are more working harder than the other, and um, uh, the best treatment to start with is physical therapy to stabilize that shoulder. You know, stabilization of the shoulder is very, very helpful. And, um, and then uh, uh, exercise, in, uh, exercise to do at home. There is home exercise program that need to be done at home uh, that uh, stabilize the shoulder. So those are. Okay, we just have two minutes left for the show, but we have a caller, so we're <laughs> going to try to get this, squeak this caller in real quick. Hi, Cheryl, this is, you are live on Doctors on Call. I'll go ahead with your question for Dr. Bell. Yes, I was wondering, I've heard that taking chondroitin glucosamine supplements are good for joint health. I don't have any problems right now, but um, what do you think of that? Yes, um I don't have the real data about it. Um, uh, what I would say, it uh, might help some to prevent for those young, but uh, once we um, get into a stage of uh, arthritis and degenerative joint that has been uh, established, uh, it does not do much uh, anymore, unfortunately. So um, the best way to do it, as uh, you mentioned, is to to have a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle uh, um, include uh, f fitness, including uh, mm. the diet, healthy diet. There are healthy diet. Plant-based diet is working really well because, uh, you know, plant-based diet is healthy for the va vessels, healthy for the muscle, healthy for the tendon, and uh, healthy for everything. And so uh, the combination of healthy diet and fitness um, it's really protecting us in the joints, and including uh, it includes into that the nutrition's value of it, and those micronutrients is helping the joint. Uh, one part of that is what you mentioned chondroitin, but uh, there are more than that. Uh, you know, um, inside those fruits and vegetables, and legumes, beans, and so on. Great. 
Okay, thank you so much. That about thank wraps you. us up for this evening. Thanks again to Dr. Bell Razafringer Bay from Great Bend for being our guest. On our next Doctors on Call, we'll be discussing joint pain and uh, concussions. You can email us questions at doctors at shptv.org for that show. Thank you for joining us for Doctors on Call. I'm Jenna Miller. Presentation of Doctors on Call on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from CAMCO, the state's only Kansas-based medical liability provider, serving medical professionals and advocating for the health for all Kansans. Your family is our family. Staff at Smith County Memorial Hospital wants to set the standard of excellence for health care in North Central Kansas.